So this is a huge W. Cody Ford's contract was revealed today. And this contract is very team friendly. So they signed him to a one year veteran minimum $1.08 million. Nothing guaranteed. Which means, yes, he can be cut at any time. Get gotten rid of at any time. And he's costing the Bengals absolutely nothing. Now, at the time of him being signed, you know, we thought Max wasn't going to come back. Well, Max got resigned. Max Sharping. And the reason why he got resigned was because Jonah Williams was supposed to be the right tackle. But now that he's asking to be traded because he doesn't want to play right tackle, that means that Max needs to get resigned back to backup guard so that Cody Ford can now be the right tackle. We already know that Collins is not going to be healthy enough to play week one of the NFL season. So unless the team goes out there and drafts somebody or signs somebody else, which I've said many times, the Patriots right tackle is the guy I would go with because I think he's an amazing tackle you can get for very, very dirt cheap, then this would be Cody Ford's job to lose. Obviously, if he cannot win the role, then it would be going to somebody else. And I'll be honest with you, if he doesn't win the role, he'll probably be cut. With that being said... This is huge because this is what I've said so many times Cincinnati needs to do. Go out there and sign a couple players, maybe two or three, sign them to veteran you know, minimum discounts and tell them, listen, we're a great team. We're a great organization. We are going to give you a chance to go win a Super Bowl. So what we want you to do is sign with us, get a one-year contract, right? We have the system that will make you look good. We have the talent that will make you look good. And then you're able to go ahead and leave us and go get a big deal somewhere else. And this is what I love to see. And this is exactly what they need to do moving forward. And again, right tackle market right now currently on free agency is not the greatest. I mean, George Fant really leads off the market. And then it kind of goes downhill after that. Um, the guy I was talking about is currently, I believe he's not technically a free agent yet. I, I believe so, because he, he's not actually on here. Uh, unless he is considered just a tackle in general. Let me see. Is he on here? Oh, he is. Isaiah Wynn. Here we go. So they just list him as a tackle, not a right tackle. Which is, I think it's because he can play both positions. But this is the guy I'm talking about. And I truly believe Cincinnati needs to go after him. I know this $10 million looks absolutely crazy. But it's not really that honestly crazy. It's because of the fact it was his fifth year option. Because uh, he was a first round pick. So once he leaves, because he his 2022 was absolutely awful under Matt Patricia. He can sign with the Bengals for maybe... Three or four million, become the starting right tackle. Go ahead and cut Cody Ford, save a million, million, and bam, you have yourself a solidified offensive line for the foreseeable future. Isaiah wins only 27 years old, best pickup of all time, in my opinion. And then if you pick up that right tackle, now in free agency, we can go ahead and let's trade Jenna Williams. I know last time I made this, I messed up. If you put Jonah Williams, right, it says T and then Jonah, which is tackle Jonah. And I, for some reason, was like, wait, who's TJ? TJ is uh, Jonah Williams. It's um, tackle Jonah Williams. Thank you. Thank you. You guys absolutely roasted me down below. And I, I trust me, I understand. I understand. All right. So based on what I've heard, the Bears are cool with their left tackle. They don't want anybody. They don't want another tackle. Um, the Jets are the team that would be the most interested. It seems like based on rumors, Chargers could also be interested. Let's trade them to the Chargers this time. And that's what a lot of people comment down below and say like, oh, there's no way Jonah would go for a fifth round pick. I, based on what I've heard from Ian Rappaport and other sources, right now they're saying his value, Jonah Williams, is a fifth round pick. Because of the contract he has connected to him. Keep in mind, you cannot get out of the contract he has. Jonah Williams is owed $12.6 million. No matter where he goes. You can't rework that. You can't sign him a new contract and get out of that. That's guaranteed money. So, if they do go ahead and trade him, 
The best I feel like they're going to get is a fourth round pick. But experts are saying right now a fifth round pick is what they're going to get to Jonah Williams. Could they keep him and say we're not going to give up him for a fifth round pick? Absolutely. But then you're going to have to tell him that he's going to play tackle. And if you're if, you're, if he's going to say, hey, listen, I'm not playing tackle, then he's going to either sit out or you're going to have to put him at back of left tackle behind Orlando Brown. So, and you're just going to have to sit him there for a year and then eventually he just leaves anyway. Um, but, yeah, so let's, let's trade him here for a fourth round pick. Whatever. There we go. So now we have an actual fourth round pick for the Bengals. If they do get Isaiah Wynn, right? Let's say hypothetically speaking, they get Isaiah Wynn in this hypothetical scenario. That means you have Orlando Brown, you have the left guard, you have Teddy K, a uh, Volston. I, I, I forget his name on top of my head. That's why I didn't say it. Volston. You got Teddy K. You got Kappa, and now you got Isaiah Wynn, right? Your line is done. Could you work one in the draft? Maybe in the fifth or sixth round, seventh round, maybe. But honestly, no, I wouldn't take any draft picks that were, uh, why was, uh, what's called? I wouldn't take any draft picks that were offensive linemen. And I'm going to tell you right now. So a lot of people were, I talked in a video last couple days ago talking about Bajin Robinson and saying how, like, you know, some someone made a mock draft, right? And had Bajin Robinson going to the, um, they had Bajin Robinson going to the Cincinnati Bengals. And I saw a couple comments saying, oh, he won't be available. He won't be available. He won't be available. He actually 1,000% probably will be available. The reason why is because Jerry Jones absolutely loved Michael Mayer. He loves all these tight ends in this draft class. So, yes, while it makes sense for the Cowboys to take Bajin Robinson, they just got rid of Zeke. They have Tony Pollard on a, a franchise tag. If you ever think the Cowboys are logical in any way possible, I hate to tell you this, they're not. Yes, he is the perfect fit for them, but in all honesty, you could see Bajan Robinson go to the Bengals because Antonio, I'm sorry, um, Damian Harris just got signed by the Bills. So they're probably not going running back. They already invested a higher raw pick in James Cook last year. They're probably not going running back either. Even though the Cowboys should, they do need a wide receiver, who I know they just picked up, uh, Brandon Cooks. But they still need another receiver. They probably, especially with Dalton uh, Swartz going, they're going to target one of these tight ends. The reason why Cincy probably won't get by Jim Rock, was I won't get Michael Mayer, is because the Cowboys take him. So it's very possible that Biden Robinson is still available at this pick. And if you get Isaiah Wynn at right tackle... And let's say Michael Mayer and both Michael Mayer and what's his name's off the board? Uh, Kincaid. I love Donnell Washington, right? And I've talked about him up and down the wall. I'm probably taking Bijan Robinson here. I probably am. Bijan Robinson is that good of a player. He is that monster of a player. And oh, I hate the fact the Patriots, the Patriots took him. I was really hoping he would drop to the second round, Donnell Washington, so I could take Donnell Washington too. But if you have your line figured out, I would probably take Bajan Robinson with the first pick if he's available. He's that good. He is honestly that good. But anyway, though, Donnell Washington went, so we're going to take Sam LaPorter in our second round here. So now we have a new running back behind Joe Mixon. We have a star tight end now. Obviously, you could also sign... Um, Moreau, we talked about earlier yesterday. He's a possible guy you could sign. You take call books with Bowling Green here. Monster. Now your offense is freaking so legit. I mean, you got a new right tackle, a new left tackle. Plus, you got to remember, you got a star running back now, a new tight end. You got a pass rusher there. Now you go Moro Jabo in the fourth. Bro, this would be such, this would break the Bengals. Because you got two fourth round picks now because you traded away, what's his name? Uh, T, uh, TJ. TJ! It is TJ Williams. Jonah Williams. Oh my god. I, I didn't even see it. And I automatically said TJ without even looking. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't be against the idea here in the fourth round now. I, I'd say take uh, Josh Wiley. This would be, I know this is not going to happen, but this would be an amazing draft. For Cincy, if they get that right tackle figured out. Because if they don't, obviously you're taking tackle in the draft, right? That's obvious. 
Then you take Bennett from Maryland here in the fifth round. You get a really stud cornerback. I don't know, guys. I, I, I'm, I'm getting so excited about this draft. All right, who else are we going to take here? Take Stetson Bennett back up for Burrow in case Burrow does go down with injury or whatever. You have Now you have a capable backup to be a starting quarterback if Burrow can't go. And in the last pick, who we got here? Um, I have no problem with that, yeah. Let's go with Owens from Houston here. Get a safety. So you got, in this draft now, right? What are they going to get me? A D minus for Josh Wiley. That is so, that is so disgusting. Josh Wiley's better than that. Come on now. So you got a backup running back who could, could become a star running back for you if Joe Mixon, you know, if he beats out Joe Mixon for the starting job. You got a star tight end now. A backup star tight end. And then you sign Moreau. So now you got two amazing tight ends. Plus Moreau, who could be a really solid tight end for you too. A god-tier pass rusher, in my opinion. Again, my opinion. Um, another really amazing defensive line pass rusher. Then you got um, a really stud cornerback to replace Eli Apple and Trey Flowers. A backup quarterback, which, let, let's be honest, is needed. In case, you know, it doesn't work out. And then finally, we got here a strong safety that can be a can be a backup to Nick Scott, and be a rotational guy with Dax Hill. I love it. Sign me up. And again, like I said, I think Bison Robinson. The more I'm looking into this, he easily could be available for the Bengals at pick 28. Especially as more and more time goes by with Michael Mayer. Possibly going early, especially going to the Cowboys. They don't have Dalton Sports, guys. Dalton Sports got signed to the um, Texans. So they have no Dalton Sports. They need a tight end. And with this tight end draft class, Jerry Jones is licking his chops. Like, he's like, listen, I want them all. I want all these tight ends. So, I'm telling you right now, it's very possible... We could see this draft class go, this draft going the way, just like this. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.